So it is the Sunday after Thanksgiving here right now and believe it or not, we're pretty much out of all of the sides <laughs> between us and hunters and just extra people around the last number of days. It's time to get in the kitchen and do some cooking. So what I have going here today, and then I just brought up a little bit of turkey broth and I picked all the rest of the turkey um, from the bones. This is mainly wild turkey and then like the two wings and the two legs from the butterball turkey. I'm going to, of course, capture those drippings right there and all of that is going to go into, it's all gonna go into this pot. And what I'm going to do first though is make some gravy. So I'm gonna use my turkey broth and get a little bit of flour whisking into that along with a little bit, actually I'm first gonna start with a little bit of fat, some melted butter, and then um, get everything, stir some flour into it, then stir in the turkey broth, and stir and stir and stir until it's just barely thick, and I'll stir in the turkey, and that is what we'll be eating on for the next couple of days. So after I stirred the, the turkey stock into that like flour and butter mixture, I just stirred and stirred and stirred, brought it to a boil, let it boil for a couple of minutes. Actually, it was probably more like three or four minutes by the time I remembered to turn off the heat. But anyway, I just put all the turkey back in here. And now I, I didn't think it was quite flavorful enough. So I added a little more. So I added some seasoned salt as well as pepper, and that still just wasn't quite doing it. So I didn't have any turkey bouillon or turkey soup base or anything, so I just used a little chicken, about two, oh, probably two teaspoons or so, maybe up to a tablespoon, I just added into it. And now it tastes, it has some good flavor to it. I probably am going to add a little bit more pepper to this, and that's going to be it. I'm going to just put the lid on this, let this go in the fridge, and tomorrow we will warm this up, serve it over mashed potatoes. Maybe I'll make some egg noodles. I'm not sure, but something like that. All right, at this point, I'm making some peanut butter chip oatmeal cookies. And in the bowl here, I have a cup of butter. I have a quarter cup of shortening, two cups of brown sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla. I needed a tablespoon of milk. I'm just going to use cream because I have that and I need one egg. All right, we're gonna do two cups of flour. One and a half cups of oatmeal. Teaspoon of baking soda. Are you making supper? Because I am home. Not right now. It's only 3 30. Are you making supper? I am. I have a half a cup of walnuts and a 10 ounce bag of peanut butter chips. <laughs>
you and dad or what? Um, so the one me and dad uh, picked out and then the other one I just found that I thought looked good. Okay, so we're gonna go down and look, look at those. Then we'll get back in the kitchen with the cookies. <laughs> This is the second tree that we're looking at. So it looks like a white pine. And I like this one better than the first one. The first one was a little wider and the branches seemed a little thinner. So this might be it. It has a nice base on it. Yep, yeah, looks like it has a nice trunk. It's got nice color. It's in a location where Warren was gonna be doing some bulldozing anyway. So it's, you know, it's gonna go over anyway. It's gonna get it's going to get toppled over. <laughs> so maybe we should just use it, huh? Yeah. I'm just going to pull out the meat thermometer here. I have this meat... Whoa, don't get on me. <laughs> this whole thing is oven safe or grill safe or whatever. So I can put this into the meat and then keep watch on here. There is another part to this where if you wanted to read all of the directions... <laughs> You can actually set the other part, it clips to your waistband, and then it will alert you when your meat reaches the temperature you want it, want it to reach. So anyway, I just, I just keep an eye on it. So when this reached 160 at low, I just turned it to warm, and then it was, oh, it gradually went down to like 145. Now I know that my, my ham is cooked but it's not overcooked. All right, we have to get this last pan of cookies out. And as I make these, I realized this was the same recipe that I made during cranberry harvest. Remember, they were those super flat, like lacy cookies. They went immediately though. They all got eaten up, but I used chocolate chips in them instead of instead of butter or uh, peanut butter chips because I had chocolate chips but not peanut butter chips even though the recipe calls for peanut butter chips. These are very, very delicious, a uh, nice buttery cookie. I take them off right away because I don't want them to get overcooked and too crispy, um, but I can show you one here. So this is at nine minutes. That's how they are at nine minutes. So they're very, very flavorful. So this is what supper is looking like tonight. I just brought up some green beans from the basement, home canned, and instant mashed potatoes, and the ham. So I just wanted to show you guys how the turkey and gravy um, meal turned out. Yesterday is when we actually had it, like for the first time in fresh with all of the sides and everything. And now tonight we're just having leftovers. So we had the turkey and gravy here. We actually just got home. Warren had warmed this up. And then this is one of those 69 cent baguettes that I grabbed from Aldi. And then we're just having the leftover rice and Warren warmed up, uh, what are those, pork and beans. And then we have a little bit of leftover mashed potatoes here, instant mashed from probably a couple of nights ago okay, already. Yeah. And just one thing, yesterday is the first time I've ever done rice in the Instant Pot. It worked out really well. I did rinse, this is jasmine, I rinsed it first. Okay, I mean. You want me to show your plate? Yep, there it is. And start talking. Okay, it looks really good. So I made the rice in the Instant Pot, followed just like the regular water, to rice ratio that was on the bag and then just hit the rice button and it worked out really well. I actually prefer the rice though on the stove because the each individual grain is a little bit more separated, um, but some of the family members were kind of split, honestly, but some liked it like this because it's a little bit stickier. The hot tip here is, I just saw this on Instagram the other day that to reheat rice, you just bring some water to a boil in your tea kettle and then put your rice in like a strainer or a sieve and pour the boiling water over the rice and it actually warms it up nicely without it all sticking like to the bottom of your pan, which is kind of what 
typically would happen. I'm going to be putting together a new recipe here. I have my crock pot, which <laughs> this is what's sitting next to my crock pot <laughs> because I went to turn the knob when I got it out and the knob completely broke off. So then anyway, I had to use this. Is this a wrench, right? Yeah, not a pliers. This is a wrench. I had to use the wrench and I had to turn it and figure out which one was low, medium, that kind of thing. But now I glued it on, so I'm hoping that it'll work. I'm hoping that that's going to work. It is warming. So the new recipe is for creamy slow cooker chicken. So I have my chicken here, and I have two teaspoons of seasoned salt, which seems like a lot to me. But it says to sprinkle, ooh, says to sprinkle, I guess that's not so bad. It still looks like a lot. To sprinkle them with seasoned salt, I'm going to do pepper. I know it doesn't say that, but I'm going to add some pepper to these as well. I have the Blackstone heating outside right now because I'm going to brown these first. The Blackstone is nice and hot. I'm just going to put down a little bit of oil and grab... I just kind of, we're just going to kind of spread that around a little bit. There we go. We're going to put these, each chicken breast down. And I'm just going to give those a couple of minutes. I'm just trying to brown them. I don't need to cook it all the way through. What you doing? I'm cooking up some chicken here that I'm going to be putting in the crock pot for supper. Oh, nice. That black is so nice. I love the black stone. Yeah. Oh, I get one so bad. They look so nice. They look so versatile. Yes, they are. Okay, a couple more minutes on the other side. Now, I think that was three minutes on the first side. And remember, in the winter like this, it is colder. And so it does, um, it takes a little bit more to cook on here, a little longer than normal. Or I shouldn't say longer than normal, but longer than in the summer. The uh, chicken isn't even cooked all the way through, which is fine, because it's going into the crock pot now for a few hours. So if I were to have made this in like in a skillet on my stove, I would have put these ingredients, which is one can of cream of mushroom soup. Uh, you could use some dry white wine. I didn't have that right now, so I'm just using a little water with some chicken bouillon granules and then a block of cream cheese. That's eight ounces. You could put that right into that skillet. Use all the chicken drippings. Well, I just scraped the blackstone and got whatever little like... Uh, bits I could off of that and I just put it right in with the chicken. I'm going to warm this in the microwave just to get this like creamy because I want that cream cheese to really melt down and then get this poured over top of the chicken. Mm, <laughs> add to my six dollars right here. <laughs> Alright, if you guys didn't hear that, Amber's here. She's <laughs> claiming. What did you claim this year? I got the buck pool. <laughs> she won the big buck contest this year. Yeah. All right, so I have the zesty Italian dressing mix. I'm going to pour this, uh, I'm going to pour it into here, stir that up, and get it poured over the chicken because I do want that chicken to cook for probably three hours, and I better get to it. It's 5.30 now, and here's the chicken. I already used my meat thermometer. Oh, it's all foggy. I think this, I sure hope that this is tasty, tasty. It looks delicious, I may, and it smells really good. Peter said it kind of smelled like 
um, like pizza cheese fries or something, he said. And then I just made up some pasta to go with that. We're going to be having salad and just a whole mix here. I have a little left, a little bit of cottage cheese and cranberry sauce and applesauce croutons. And I, have, and I just pulled out some, it's really, really hot, broccoli from last night's supper leftover. And that is going to be our supper tonight. All right, and this is how it's looking. I think the addition of broccoli is a really good call with this cream-based sauce like this because it just adds, I just think broccoli is always good with a creamy sauce. <laughs> So I was just packaging up the leftovers from supper. I wanted to point out that this was absolutely delicious. If you are a pasta lover, if you like like a creamy chicken sauce, especially if you're not really into the Parmesan kind of flavor, uh, some of the kids did sprinkle Parmesan over their chicken and pasta and sauce, um, but you don't have to. You also, the recipe did originally call to put mushrooms in it. I did not, but again, if that's something that you're into, you could definitely add, I think it called for like eight ounces or a pound of mushrooms or something. But we just have enough for two two servings here. Uh, left, kind of have the lights turned down low, so I got a lot of weird shadows here. One piece of chicken in each one with a little bit of pasta left. And yeah, you guys, this was so good. So creamy, so delicious. I wondered if it was going to be a bit salty, but it actually was not too salty uh, because, you know, you have the, the cream soup and then the chicken bouillon granules and then also that Italian dressing mix on top of it. So, but so good, so good. It is our food pantry day, which means we're going to be working at the food pantry. We have to leave the house like even before we eat lunch and then we don't get home until just before supper. So I was just rinsing off a chicken here. Some friends of ours raise chickens and this this chicken, I can't believe how well dressed it, is, it, dressed it is. It is so clean inside, so beautiful, but I'm just getting this all rinsed and everything and I'm going to put this to roast at a very, very low temperature. And I'm hoping that that's gonna be okay for the whole time that we're gone because I don't want it in the crock pot. I don't want it to just get like that, you know, like crock pot chicken skin. You know what I mean? I want it to actually roast. So I'm gonna put it into the oven, 200 degrees. Hope it works. I have a couple of baby onions here that are left from my garden, and so I'm just going to put these inside the cavity of the chicken along with a little bit of garlic. And just a scoop of garlic. I'm going to put that in there. Put a little bit of olive oil over the skin here Ew. and then we're just going to brush this around i have a couple different spices i'm going to use this mrs dash grilling seasoning sprinkle that all over it pretty liberally as you can see and then i also have some poultry seasoning and we're just going to give that a little shake as well i am going to cover this Put that into the oven when uh, at around probably about 11 15. I'm gonna put it at 200. I suppose I could maybe look up and see if 200 for how many hours. Anyway I didn't even weigh the chicken. I would guess it's probably five pounds. And then I'm just gonna let it stay in the oven until we get home and I'll take the lid off check the temperature, see what it, how it looks, and if it looks like I would like the skin to be crispier, I'll just take the lid off, keep it in a little bit, like turn the temp up, maybe even turn it to broil if I really think the skin needs a lot of crisping. So that's that's it. That's going to be a supper tonight. I'll probably, let's see, when we get home, I'll make some mashed potatoes. We have some salad left, so maybe we'll do that, but that's supper. They gave us so much food. They gave us some pretzels to snack on, donuts, brownies, <laughs> tootsie rolls, tootsie rolls, uh, 
the Hershey Kisses. Yeah. And then to take home, they gave us some barbecue potato chips and ice cream. <laughs> The kids were making friends. That's what happens when you go to work at the food pantry. The kids make friends with all the old guys, right? And then they all are like, oh, you're so cute. Here, do you want some treats? <laughs> all right, well, we are home now, and I just pulled the chicken out here. I used, just stuck the meat thermometer in it, and it's registering 187. So that appears that it should be done. I'm actually just going to cut away. Well, let me just... So I just turned the temperature up to 250. I'm gonna put it in with the lid off just for a little while so that it can kind of just roast the skin a bit. All right, well, here's how the chicken turned out. Um, yeah, I think everyone's just gonna kind of carve off push, what they want or push maybe the, tear off sorry. a leg. Do you want a leg, Joe? Yes. There you go, there it is. Thanks for the thumbs up. And then we're also just doing, we have three leftover baked potatoes and just kind of a little lineup of salad. Yep, salad and things. And gravy too. And gravy too. I did make pan gravy. So if you're not familiar with making pan gravy, it was just all the drippings from the chicken. And then what I did is just shake some water with about a quarter cup of flour. And then I brought this to a boil and just stirred and stirred like I slowly very 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 slowly stirred in that cold water with the flour stirring with a fork the entire time bring it to a boil and then just kind of continue continue to cook it until it's about the thickness that you want knowing that as it cools a little it will thicken up a little bit more salt and pepper lots and lots of salt and pepper oh mom what is that Ah, uh, that's an onion. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say, like, what? What is, is that? There an egg in the chicken? <laughs> I was gonna say. Why did uh, they have an egg layer? <laughs> into a... No, I I and just put a couple. Cool, of onions. Mama, I was gonna say like, huh? Is the heart in it, Mom? Of course not. No. Yes, of course not. Did you throw it away? It it wasn't there, honey. They oh. they took care of it. Good morning, everybody. I haven't had coffee yet, so if my voice is sounding a little bit gravelly, that's probably why. This is definitely not, <clears throat> excuse me, this is definitely not the kitchen that I wanted to get up to this morning. Yesterday was such a busy day for us. We were basically out the door by noon yesterday and did not get home until about, gosh, it had to have been 9.30, maybe even a bit after 9.30, and nobody at that point of the night was going to do dishes. So here we are waking up to all these dishes. I have to wash the coffee pot first, but we have another full day ahead of us. Warren mentioned that he wanted to get up really early this morning to start making potato pancakes. Normally we would not eat breakfast before church, as Catholics who believe in the true presence of the Eucharist, we like to um, we like to stick to no food or drink crossing over our tongue an hour before the Eucharist, which is usually about halfway through Mass. All right, good morning. Did you see that? Just dropped an egg on the floor. So anyway, we just usually don't eat breakfast before church. We will have some coffee. The kids usually will have something to drink. Sometimes they'll eat. But anyway, I was thinking all along I was going to do waffles. Then he was like, well, maybe we should do some eggs. Maybe we should do some bacon. So here we are up early, early so that we can get breakfast done and still stick to our no food an hour before. So I'm looking outside and it's actually looks like we got about a quarter of an inch of snow overnight, which is kind of fun. It just makes it all look oh, festive and Christmassy again.
filming. Here, put a hat on because it's like a bad hair morning. Wow. It's too early in the morning to show our faces. <laughs> I gotta have a cup of courage here. <laughs> I feel like I'm five years old. <laughs> <laughs> Now don't get dirty. Oh, I already dropped an egg on the floor. Mm. I already spilled egg out of my bowl. Here's your coffee. Thank you. You don't want me to play supervisor? You can supervise all you want. I'm just going to stand here and try to look intelligent. Important? <laughs> no, intelligent. <laughs> I don't need to be important. <laughs> you just want to be... You just want to look smart, huh? Yeah. What's that? With, with this bad hair morning, that's going to be hard to do. <laughs> so I already mentioned on here that we were going to be doing potato pancakes, but... Mm. You know what? I didn't get up in time. And it's windy. Yeah. Sometimes... Windy and cold. Sometimes to try to keep the either grill or, in our case, the Blackstone hot in the wind is kind of hard. And it seemed like a pretty lofty goal anyway, I thought. Yeah. I wouldn't make potato pancakes at 5.30 in the morning, that's well, for sure. That really doesn't bother me, it's just I didn't sleep well. well let me look here, it's 12 after 6. I could probably get the potato pancakes whipped up by 6.30 and get them on the black stone. I think I could probably do this. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. All right, I'm making it. potato pancakes because I said I would. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yep, I'm gonna do it. All right. I've had questions before why I twist the bacon. Honestly, it's just so that I can get the whole pound package onto a pan. I, if I lay it out flat, it doesn't quite uh, want to fit. And sometimes, you know, depending on how many people we're going to have or something, I can twist it and I can get even more than one pound package on a pan. So uh, that's why. I, I don't know if it really has anything to do with the taste or the flavor or anything like that. It just it just works. And I saw it someplace and I thought it was a neat idea. So we've been doing it for probably four years now. you're gonna oh I wasn't sorry I wasn't showing anybody's face this morning yet oh boy <laughs> I just peeked up at you for a second there. that's right I already showed my face outside you did well I put my hat on wow good for you covered I covered up the bad hair morning <laughs> I would not do that Here's okay you. so whoops that's the wrong recipe so in cookbook number two is where you'll find the potato pancakes recipe and that's a pretty small batch the recipe as listed so, like Warren said, he normally double or triples it. So he has about six cups of potatoes here. And yes, he is going to go with six eggs. And yes. Yeah, he's going to just triple the whole thing here. It's a recipe for a reason. Got to follow it. All right, good morning, everyone. So the potato, oh, here we go. Potato pancakes are happening. Um, I said I would, so I'm doing it starting to get light no sun today it snowed last night as you can see we have maybe an inch I have the whole batch of potato pancakes on the Blackstone which is just awesome that you can do it all at once um, but it's cold out here so I gotta go grab a coat and ma and manage these pancakes So we flipped all the pancakes. Don't they look beautiful? We got the wood burner loaded over there. It's smoking away some fr fresh load of wood in it. So yeah, we're about a half hour from sunrise. 
whether or not we'll see the sun that remains to be seen but still snowing a little bit but uh, you cannot beat a good potato pancake it's about as good as they come You're doing the Vanna White turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks great. I want this every morning. Mm, it's gonna cost you. <laughs> Maria, you're right. It's a winter wonderland this morning. We just keep getting the snow, which is so fun. We got polka on. It's a Wisconsin Sunday morning. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. Alright, well we are officially in the hat wearing season. It has been so damp today and just chilly. We were just kind of out and about to do some errands. So we ended up taking the gifts that we bought for like the snowflake tree, the giving tree. Uh, we had to drop those off today. We had to go to the post office today. Thank you so much to Heather from Maine for the Christmas greetings. That was very sweet of you. And Merry Christmas to you, Heather. And then I also, what else? Oh, we also, that's what I'm here for, is to show you guys a Dollar General haul. I, for the very first time, actually used the Dollar General app and what I did is I made my list there's like a spot on there where you can actually make your list at home so I made my list I was able to scan all the coupons which is so nice because like in the store where this toilet paper was they did not have the a little sticker saying that there was a deal that if you spent $15 you got $3 off so I would not have known to even load that onto my card so that was really nice uh, that way and then I also knew exactly what I was looking for in the store and I stayed on track <laughs> so I did pick up three of the Scott toilet tissue I did get a comment from somebody recently that they said Walgreens has this often for I want to say $3.75 a package which is a great price I just have not been shopping Walgreens in a long time and again I would have to I don't get their flyers so I would have to go on it would be one more thing I'd have to do online and quite honestly you guys sometimes I just get sick of being cut my face always having my face staring at a computer screen of some kind okay I did pick up the fruit snack deal because when I grocery shopped this last time I did not buy any fruit snacks and everyone was like no fruit snacks and I was just like well, I was trying to be a little bit more healthy and not get those, and then I was thinking that I would get some that um, had like the no color added and things like that from Thrive. Well, anyways, here I was at Dollar General, and there was a deal, and so I picked up the Funnables. Okay, a few other things here. So I did pick up some of these candy canes. Uh, Santa always likes to put these into the kids' stockings, so I picked those up, and it was time for some more mascara, so I'm just trying this clump crusher this time. I also picked up these minis in the Carmex. There was a deal on this. They have a little thing on there that you can get cash back, and so you might not get the, the money off of it right away, you might actually get cash back. You click on the spot that says wallet and it tells you. So now I have two dollars cash back. Next time I go to Dollar General I can just pull that up, show it to them, they'll do whatever they need to and I'll get two dollars off my bill. So that is a really great thing and just that's just another great option with their app. So these these are just so cute and I needed to kind of like restock all my spots so I thought I would try these Carmex minis. And then just a little bit of Christmas candy here. I didn't go hog wild today. Um, they're, they're very similar. This is just all the little mini candy bars. And then this one has Rolos, Reese's, peanut butter cups, 
and the candy bars mixed together. Again, it was just a deal, and so I thought I would pick that up today. And I'll keep watching for some other Christmas candy, but Peter also has a Christmas party to go to, and he's going to make a surprise ball. So I'm not sure if you've ever seen or heard of a surprise ball, but what you do is you take a, um, like a 97 cent package of crepe paper or streamer paper, and you start with a piece of candy or some sort of little trinket. You can really do whatever little trinkets or uh, money or whatever that you want, but you start with one. So he'll start with a piece of candy. He'll start wrapping the streamers around it. He'll add a dollar bill because the gift is like $10. So he'll add a dollar bill, wrap the streamers, add another piece of candy, add a dollar bill, and you keep adding and adding and wrapping and wrapping until you have like this ball, and then you put a little bow on top, and it's a surprise ball. So as the person unwraps, so they have kind of that fun, especially for kids, the fun of unwrapping and never knowing what they're going to get. All right, well, a haul really wasn't supposed to be part of this style of video here, but I didn't really know where else to put that, and I know that everybody loves a good haul video. So I need to go and finish thawing the hamburger. We're going to do hamburgers on the Blackstone tonight for supper. I was just rolling up the bags to uh, put them away, and I felt something in there, and it was the CoverGirl BB Cream. I forgot that I picked this up as well. I don't know if I've tried this particular brand before. I have had some different BB Creams. Um... So we're just going to give it a try because I just kind of like something a little bit lightweight here for winter because my skin tends to be so dry. I don't like to put a lot of like cakey makeup on, otherwise it looks cakey. So on the food front, I just wanted to show you guys one of the ways, just a great way to save money, especially if every time you go into the store you tend to spend a lot more, is to buy things in bulk so that you don't have to be running to the store every single week for whatever the sale prices are. Maybe that's your thing. I love to do that, but I also love to buy in bulk. What it does too is it saves my grocery shopping trip from being so huge all at once. All right, so a friend of ours, they kind of do like these meat sales through a local meat processing plant. So here's what I did. I bought 40 pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and I just repackaged them here into, and they are huge, huge chicken breasts, and so I just repackaged them into uh, smaller packages because they come in 10-pound bags. That would be too much. I wouldn't want to thaw all that at once. I mean, maybe sometimes I would if I'm doing a big bulk cooking, but I don't always want to. I also ordered brats, and this was a pleasant surprise. These are actually the fully cooked brats. These look delicious to me, so I'm actually, these are in 10 pound bags. I'm going to, I think, no, five pound, sorry, these are five pound bags. So what I'm going to do is divide these into four smaller bags here so that I have like two and a half pounds of brats in each bag. I think that'll be better for, suited for us. And then I also bought chicken thighs, or leg quarters, excuse me. And these are also in 10 pound bags, but I think I'm gonna leave these like this. I can thaw one of these and I could make maybe, I don't know how many are in here. It looked, when I tried counting, it looked like there was about eight maybe. So what I can do is bake some of them the first night. I can keep a couple of them raw and maybe make a small uh, pot of chicken noodle soup the next night or whatever, but these I'm gonna keep in 10 pound bags. I'm not gonna do anything with this, so I just put the plastic back on that, put the lid on. Now all I have to do is the brats. But anyway, just another great way to save is to buy in bulk. Uh, check your prices even when bulk buying, because it's not always a savings. I have not tried Azure Standard. A friend of mine has for, I don't even know how, how often, uh, maybe about the last six months, and she said it's great. And so I might have to give that a try sometime too, but for now, this is working great. I cannot wait for them to do another meat sale. So if you guys are listening or watching my video, definitely let me know when you're going to do another one of these sales, because I think I would order even more next time. At this point in the evening, it's time to get started on supper. So I just whipped out my handy dandy hamburger press, pressing up some beef burgers tonight to do on the Blackstone. I'm going to cut up some onions and we're going to do cheese and pickles and tater tots. That's going to be supper here. 
on this Monday night. Do you have any pointers for cold weather blackstone cooking? No. Nope. Okay. So one thing we've found with cooking on the blackstone in like when it's cold like this is really it needs a long time to heat up. So my guess, I I don't know this for sure, but my guess is we probably are going to use more propane yes. with this than with our gas grill. Uh, but I just think that. I think the end product is so much better. <laughs> and there's a lot of benefits, you know, when we did the potato pancakes. You can't do those on a grill. Right. It's really easy to do little bits of meat when you want to sort of almost stir fry, mm -hmm. like stew meat, pieces of venison or chicken. That works really well to, well to do that on the Blackstone. One thing is that the lid, at least the one we have, uh, came with the lid, and so the lid really helps, I think, to block some of the wind. Mm -hmm. On the back side here, you can see how, you know, like, under there is where the flames are, and then this kind of, the lid sort of blocks some of the wind and helps to keep it a little bit warmer, too.